Welcome to exploring the relationship between two quantitative variables. In this video, we're going to talk about the least squares regression line. What? And why is it called a least squares line? Where's that come from? Well, let's dive right into it. So we have learned that if you have a scatter plot that is analyzing the relationship between two quantitative variables, and if you look at that scatter plot and you see a pretty strong linear relationship, you might consider putting a line through the data. And that would be a model used to make predictions. So we call this line the linear regression model, and we have learned that that is y hat equals a plus bx, where A is the y-intercept of that linear line and B is the slope of that linear line. And please make sure you really understand why we put that little hat on the y because this line is simply used to make predictions. It's not to, meant to tell you what's going to actually happen. So the question is, why is this the best line, right? Well, first off, we have called it a linear regression model. I'm actually going to change the name of it. Actually, I'm not changing the name of it. I'm just going to give you its full name. The full name of this line is called the least squares regression line, or LSRL. A lot of people have just called it LSRL for short. So, it's, you know, again, so it's good. It's like a, imagine you have a big long name and maybe you have a nickname. Hey, what's up, linear regression model? Or maybe somebody really wants to cut that short, LSRL. But your full name is the least squares regression line. Okay, so why is this the best line and where the heck? <laughs> Why the heck do we call it a least squares line? Like, this is a weird name. Well, let's talk about it. So let's look at an example that we've um, seen in, in past videos if you've been catching up with my videos. Um, here we have a scatter plot that shows 16 Ford F-150 trucks. And it shows the miles on those trucks and the price of those trucks. And we see a beautiful, pretty strong, linear, negative scatter plot where it makes sense that the more miles on a used truck, the lower, the cheaper, the price of that truck. Now, what we've already done is said, hey, hey, you know, I noticed it's linear. Why don't we put a line through it that we could use this beautiful red line to make predictions? And that line is the predicted price of a truck is 38,257 minus 0.629 times X, the miles driven. Okay, great. But why is this the best line. Like, what makes this the best line, and why the heck do we call it a least squares regression line? Well, let's talk about that. So, on the left hand side here, we have that red line. I'm telling you right now, that's the best line. But why is it better than, like, you know, this line right here? Like, you know, I, I could argue that's a good line. Well, okay, I hope everybody's like, no, that's not a terrible line. It doesn't go through the data. So, yes, like, it makes most sense to a lot of students that the line needs to go through the data. The red line does a much better job of going through the data than the blue line. But let's talk from a statistics point of view why that is. The red line has a nice balance of positive and negative residuals. Well, so does the blue line. You know, all of the points on the left are negative residuals, they're below the line. All the points on the right are positive residuals, they're above the line. So that, isn't that something that the two graphs actually have in common? Well, yes, but again, that's not the full story. It needs to go through the data. We don't want to have all positive residuals in the beginning, or excuse me, in this case, all negative in the beginning, and then all positive at the end. We want to have a nice mix of positive and negative residuals in the beginning, some positive and negative in the middle, and some positive and negative at the end. That's actually showing that we're going through the data. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense to, to most students. And then we could further say, well, okay, you know, I, I hope everybody agrees that, you know, this isn't the best line, all the residuals are positive. Or this isn't the best line, all the residuals are negative. So, you know, what makes the red line maybe a little bit better than this blue one? I mean, if you look at them, they are actually slightly different, but why is the red one better? How come this blue one right here is not better? So again, it's, it's really like a dance. You're really trying to perform this very elegant dance where you're trying to go through the points 
And you want to have a nice balance of residuals. You want positive residuals. You want negative residuals, not only in the beginning or the end, but throughout the beginning, the middle, and the end. And you want all those residuals to be pr pretty small, right? And, you know, maybe you make a couple really, really small, but then you leave others really, really big. Well, again, that's not the best line. Or if I only focus on the points towards the top, I say, okay, I'm going to make these ones all really, really small. But then I got a bunch of really big residuals at the bottom. So, again, it's this, it's this balancing act that's so vital, so important. And math, math, mathematicians, statisticians, we were like, listen, we, it can't just be like this ho-hum thing. Like, you know, the process of finding the best line isn't just like, uh, uh, e, e, is this it or that it? Like, there's literally needs to be a mathematical process. So here's the mathematical process that, you know, statisticians came up with. So what we do is we take the residuals and we square them. So uh, a residual is the actual value minus the predicted value, that vertical distance between your line and your actual point. So we find those vertical distances, and then we square them, okay? And then we add them all together. That's our Greek letter there, sigma for sum them all together. And it's that sum, this sum of the residual squared that we want to be the smallest. So the true best line is the line that has the sum of the squared residuals smaller than any other line. That's the math of it. Okay, well now, hopefully you're kind of picking up that that's what we call the least squares regression line. It's we want the sum of the square residuals to be as least as possible. All right, so let's go back and let's actually try to draw a picture of this, right? So the red line is the best line. So if I were to draw the residuals, the residual is the vertical distance to the line, and then I square that value. Vertical distance to the line, square that value. Vertical distance to the line, square that. Now, some of these squares I know are overlapping, but you get my point. Vertical distance, squared. Vertical distance, squared. Vertical distance, squared. And this one would actually be a very tiny square, most of these squares you're seeing, some are kind of larger, but most of them are pretty small. And that's actually the point. We want the sum of all of those residuals squared to be as small as possible. So if you look at that red line, you're like, dang, those residuals squared are pretty small. Now imagine if for a second we actually thought that this line right here was the best line. Now, in the middle, we do have some very small squared residuals. Look at them. In the middle here, some very small squared residuals. But because the line, I hope everybody is like, duh, that line doesn't go through the data. At the ends, we have some enormous squares. Look how big this squared residual is. Look how big this squared residual is. Look at this one right here. It's a huge squared residual. Look at this one. Huge, right? Because the residual is the vertical distance. So because the line is not really going through the data, and I, it, it's clearly not, it creates some really big squared residuals. And that's why the blue line is not nearly as good as the red line. The red line is the line that has the sum of the squared residuals the smallest. So what's happening when this red line gets created and by the way, there's going to be another video that I really want you to watch that is in tandem with this video on how to actually get that line. But we'll talk about that in that video. But that line, when it is birthed, <laughs> when that line is, is built, it's built because it has the sum of the squared residuals at its smallest. No other line could be created that has the sum of the squared residuals as small as this makes sense. Okay. Um, let's just look at one more just so you get a real nice picture of this. So if you recall, this is, whoop, 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 that's not the wrong one. Never mind. So here's just a close up. Excuse me. Here's a close up of that um, model here for the, the miles on a truck and the price. If you actually go and calculate, now listen, first off, you're never going to have to do this, right? I am never going to ask you to find all the residuals and square them. But I just want to prove a point as to why it's actually the best line. Again, all of these vertical distances squared need to be small. And if you look at most of them, most of them are actually really, 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 really small. But occasionally you're going to have a larger one. Okay, well, you know what? The points don't make a straight line. Life's not always going to be, you know, perfect. But more than any other line out there, this one has the sum of the square residuals 
the smallest. So again, it's the sum of the residuals squared that we want to be the smallest, which is why this becomes the best line. And that is why it's called the least squares regression line. Not going to ask you to really do a whole lot with this, like, you know, from a from just as a participant point of view, the line is made to force this to happen. So you're not you don't have to worry about like, did this happen? Okay, The line is built for this to happen. But I just want you to understand why it's called the least squares regression line and why it really is the best line from just kind of looking at it. All right, so hopefully that all makes sense. You learned a little bit in this video about why we have the least squares regression line and why it got its name.